Okay, Abak Zarin is a Master's of Library Information Science from Catholic University of America in 2018, 2019, excuse me, and was a 2018-2019 ALA Spectrum Scholar Cohort member uh, and is a member of the Central Rappahannock Regional Library Access Services Librarian. As the Access Services Librarian, his responsibilities include administering CRRL's Books by Mail program and the Fredericksburg Sub-Regional Library for the Blind and Print Disabled, also known as the Talking Book Library, as well as helping CRRL continue its proud tradition of offering accessible programming and services to the community. His research interests include looking at how libraries can continue adapting their services to the needs of today's information heavy pluralistic society, as well as fandom studies. Babak can be followed on Twitter under at L I G I T N O W L. Mike Fish has his master's degree in special education from George Mason University. His students, ta he taught students with visual impairments at the Arlington Public School System for, in Virginia for two and a half years before coming to work at the Virginia Rehabilitation Center for the Blind and Vision Impaired. At the center, he is the lead access technology instructor and teaches students computer and access te technology skills, as well as providing training and seminars to the public on those same skills. When he's not working, Mike spends time with his wife and four children, watching all things Star Wars and reading for the Buffalo Bills and <laughs> Buffalo Sabres. Take it away, guys. Meet still. Uh, this is Mike Fish. Um, so Babic is definitely more of the scholarly gentleman than myself. Uh, <laughs> I more uh, focus on just uh, I teach at the like I said the rehab center for the blind on um, computer skills, uh, technology skills, and so access technology is literally anything with a battery or a plug that talks to you or that you want to talk to. So um, you might know the iOS devices, iPhones, iPads. Uh, the uh, Android devices, the Amazon devices, including the tablets and the Echoes and all those kinds of things, as well as Braille displays and um, just just literally anything <laughs> that has batteries or a plug or you you know that can talk at you. So uh, that that's kind of a quick overview. But today I wanted to talk about um, a bit a bit from a not necessarily a web thing, more of a mobile platform here. So. I want to focus on some entertainment options and some independent options. So for independence, you might think, well, what is entertainment and independence? How do they how do they relate? Uh, the best way to say that is that um, nowadays we can access off the shelf technology, and, I, and I'll reference back to those iPhones and iPads and and Android tablets, stuff that you can pick up like. Sighted individuals and just use out of the box. Might have a little configuring to do, but you're not having to install third party software. You're not having to, uh, you know, pay an extra hundred dollars to get a speech synthesizer on your smartphone so you can use it like everybody else does. Uh, just personal experience there. I had to do that about oh, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, but but you can get those things accessible out of the box. And so I'm going to talk about a couple of entertainment things that you may or may not be aware of. Some things that help you appreciate, you know, getting access to books and materials and watching videos and things like that. The other thing I want to talk about is accessing um, independent skills. So, you know, reading uh, that book that's printed or reading a sign or a, a printed piece of mail or reading uh, the, you know, identifying cans in your pantry or uh, package items that really, you know, all boxes kind of look the same if you get them from the store. So you're like, you know, what box is this versus, you know, the box of, uh, you know, crackers, box of, I'm not sure, but uh, another item that, you know, comes in a similar box, noodles or something, you know? So we're gonna cover a couple things on that uh, and then have some questions and then, let Babic kind of take it from the physical space kind of category of things. Um, first thing I want to do is we're going to start with the fun stuff first, the entertainment piece. 
So hopefully you guys have heard of what's called audio description or video description. And what that is, is uh, I, uh, getting description or knowing what's going on in a movie or, or video or television. There is a ton of different options. I wouldn't say a ton. There's, there's several options. A lot of the platforms now, your Netflix, your Hulu, your Disney Plus. Start my video. Um, Press control. Well, I don't know if the video went out on me or not, but according to my jaws, it did. Uh, so hold on one second. Um, Control shift V. Maybe that'll start it again. But um, we see you, Mike. Oh, good. Okay. Jaws needs to stop yep. talking. Hold on a second. <laughs> Speech on demand. There we go. All right. So, um, so video description, like I said, is is you know a lot of different platforms. Um, you may have heard of YouTube TV. It has some video description. Uh, Netflix, Hulu. Um, what's the new Paramount, which is used to be CBS? Um, all those platforms are mobile platforms. You can download their apps to your devices, and they they will stream. You know, you can stream uh, things with with video description or audio description. You have to go into the menus and turn it on. But once it's on, it'll it'll provide that spoken feedback during a show or movie that's not during the actual dialogue. So I want to show you that by, um, you know, referencing my Star Wars uh, addiction. I mean, uh, interest. And uh, I'm going to turn my sound on here and we're going to listen to the opening scene here of the 1977 movie Star Wars. Hi. Pause button, center of screen. Speech off. Now in blue letters against a pitch black background, the top. A title outlined in gold verse on the screen, Star Wars. Suspended in an infinite void of outer space, words in giant gold letters roll slowly out from beneath us and disappear into the distant stars. They read, Episode 4, A New Hope. It is a period of civil war. Rebel spaceships striking from a hidden base have won their first victory against the evil Galactic Empire. During the battle, rebel spies managed to steal secret plans to the Empire's ultimate weapon, the Death Star, an armored space station with enough power to destroy an entire planet. Pursued by the Empire's sinister agents, Princess Leia races home aboard her starship, custodian of the stolen plans that can save her people and restore freedom to the galaxy. The titles fade into the distance like a flat rectangular spaceship. Our view trails across the galaxy of glittering white stars to a planet with two orbiting moons. A small starship soon has passed, exchanging rapid laser fire with a battle cruiser 10 times its size. The cruiser is dark and shaped tall, comes over us, and its fiery blue engines in the back. It locks the smaller spins rack with a blast across the surface. On board the small starship, several robots struggle to keep their footing. One is a gold humanoid robot with glowing yellow eyes. His companion is three feet tall and shaped like a domed capsule. They shut down the main reactor, but will be destroyed for sure. This is madness. The little robot swivels its domed head and flashes lights in reply. Now human so Okay. So I show that to uh Speech on. really highlight um the fact that you know th there was no video on that, or there may have been, uh, but you don't need the video at that point. You you get the 
the whole sound of the movie. You get the description kind of telling you what's going on. Now, what's really cool for me is I grew up watching Star Wars, of course, without audio description. And I never knew, you know, yeah, you knew there was a little space battle there, but I didn't know what was going on. I didn't realize how big the difference between the ships were. I also didn't realize, you know, later in the, sh in the series, uh, Han Solo will call 3PO Goldenrod. Well, now I know why, because he's all, he's yellow. But also, I didn't know what R2-D2 looked like, which is the little, you know, three-foot-tall robot. And you hear him beeping, but necessarily didn't know he was looking around or, you know, turning his head or what he was doing. So, it's little things that you miss, and that's a small example, as a blind viewer, um, that the audio description can can give you that uh, that piece of. Uh, and that was just off, off of Disney Plus that I, I, I used for, for this demonstration. But like I said, it's available on a lot of different platforms. Um, as far as devices are concerned, off-the-shelf off devices, your Amazon Fire Sticks work. Uh, a lot of the TVs are smart TVs now, so they have talking uh, screen screen reading technology in them. So they'll read the menus and the shows, and you can turn on and off the video description. And Comcast does that as well. I know Verizon does and a couple other you know, TV companies um, also have remotes you can talk to and say play a certain channel or whatever. Uh, you also have um, the Apple TV, the um, the Roku's, the newer ones are accessible with with a screen reader built into them as well. The one cool thing that I will mention before we move on to another a topic is um, with the uh, Apple TV Plus subscription and even on some of the Disney Plus stuff, they're actually audio driving trailers. So that's kind of neat because so often for me, you know, you're watching, or used to be, um, you know, you, you'd watch a, the commercials and the trailers would come on and you just never know what was going on. But on the um, Apple TV uh, app and the Disney Plus, some of their uh, trailers have audio descriptions so that you can be like, oh, yeah, I want to watch it because now I know what's going on. Or, you know, no, that's not for me. But you can make that decision, not just based off the audio of the show or the movie with the description it helps. So that's an entertainment feature that I think, you know, as members of society, you know, we, we should as blind people be able to participate, you know, as equally in that as we can. So that's where I really promote audio description because I think it's, I think it's a really cool way to, to uh, interact with, with the media. Another option would be um, the NLS bar program. And I'm sure Caitlin, you might talk about that later. Uh, but that allows access to audio or Braille books uh, through an app, either on your phone, <clears throat> Android or iOS, or even on Kindle devices as well. So that's a really cool way to get <clears throat> access to uh, printed materials, just in an audio or even a Braille form. There's other websites and resources like Bookshare as well <clears throat> that you could use as well. Give me one quick second. We're going to jump over to more of an independence uh, situation. I'm going to talk about an app called Seeing AI. Seeing AI is an app by Microsoft, and that's available on iOS devices. There are similar devices like Envision AI and SuperSense AI that will do very similar things to what I'm about to show you. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up Seeing AI with my phone here. 2.27 p.m. If I unlock it, there we go. Open Seeing AI. Seeing AI, back button. So I have... Back. Menu, screen curtain on. Screen curtain off. Um, I've got the app here in front of me. Uh, this app is kind of a... An all-in-one kind of thing. It has a lot of different uh, potential that you can use it for. So there's a short text option. There's a uh, full text or a, a, a document option. There's a barcode option. There's a currency reader, a light detector, uh, color identifier, which I don't, you know, I don't, I don't trust the color identifier because it says I have gray hair. And although I have four kids uh, under 40, I, I don't know how much gray hair I would really have. Uh, you know, anyone who knows that answer, no, don't tell me. Uh, but um, there are a lot of different things you can do with just this app. I'm going to show you a few of the features here. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is short text. 
So I have a book here off to the left here. It's uh, an I Survived book that my son reads, and I'm just going to hold the phone over top of it. Right page not visible. Oh, okay. Cool. Quick, take picture. Recognize our Let's see. channel for text. There we go. Help. Share. Meeting help. Sarah G. Wisdom. Yep, oh, it was looking at my screen. <laughs> All dot. There we go. 31. Q search. OQ. Recognize channel. Short I. New York Times best selling series or series. The New York Times best selling series or 00004 or New York Times best or that or SERS series. So you hear it starts to keep repeating itself. It's because it's trying to get the best picture it can. So I'm going to move off to the side here and see if it gets any better. The New York Times best selling series or seven or seven or seven New York Times best selling series. Or so this is short text. Channel. I'm going to switch it to document Very mode. Document. And we're going to get a picture of the uh, page of this book. So hold on. Right? Processing. Back. Button. Back. 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 Button. I'm going to try that again. Back. Back. Hold steady. Processing. Back. Button. Scan result. Chapter 1. Chapter 10. Refers 7, 1941 8. 5 a.m. Pearl City, Hawaii. America was under attack. Hundreds of bomber planes were swarming over Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. They swooped down. Machine guns rolling. Bombs and torpedoes raining down. 1. Play. Button. Stop. Button. Increase font size. So that was part of the text it got from the first page of this I Survived uh, Pearl Harbor book that I have sitting here. And uh, you have a way to make it play with a, a different voice if you'd like. You can also have it uh, increase or decrease the font size. And that's just scanning a page. So it works really well with letters or mail, things like that. And this app is, is free on iOS. Uh, Envision is a subscription Maybe. app, but it is on both iOS and Android. And I believe SuperSense may also be on both platforms as well. Uh, I know that um, I believe it's Google Lens is also an Android app that does similar things to this one. Take Ricky channel document product. So the other one is product. So I have a few products behind me. One is a can. And cans are always hard because um, putting the barcode, right? It's always a little difficult to do that. So I have this can on the desk here and I'm going to rotate it while my camera is pointed at it. You hear the beeps coming through, hopefully. Processing. No salt added whole kernel corn. So it says no salt added whole kernel corn. Here, button, more info. I can mm -hmm. share that or get more information, although there's not much more information you need other than it's no, you know, no salt added whole kernel corn. So that's a can. One of the other issues is a box. This box I can shake and tell you it's noodles. But share button. No salt added whole kernel corn. I can also button. hold my phone Menu. over it. Button. And there's nothing on this side of the box. I'm going to turn it on its side. You may have heard that beep. It was trying to find the barcode. Still turning. Not recognized. Close. Right, that's button. not true. Close. Right, button. Try again. Barley gluten-free penne. So that said Barilla gluten-free penne, which is exactly what that is. And it just took flipping the box around to see if we could find it. Now here, I'm partial to this particular Close. product, Button. and you'll know why in a second. This is the package bag item, which Often uh, is very difficult to get barcodes on. So you find yourself holding it six different ways to see if you can get it right. Processing similar to CMI Betty Crocker chocolate chip cookie mix. So you heard that it eventually found it, and it says Betty Crocker chocolate chip cookie mix. Well. That's helpful and all. Good to know what it is, but I want to see more info. Maybe Crocker chocolate chip share more info. More but information. 
such as the ingredients or the instructions. 30 crocker chocolate chip cookie mix directions. You will need one stick, one slash two cup, butter, margarine or spread, softened, not melted, one tablespoon water, one x it should have at least 65% vegetable oil. To soften butter, let stand at room temperature for 45-60 minutes, or microwave for 10-15 seconds until softened one. Heat oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 350 degrees Fahrenheit for dark or non-stick cookie sheet. Stir cookie mix, softened butter, water and egg in a medium bowl until soft dough forms two. Drop dough by rounded teaspoonfuls two inches apart on ungreased cookie sheet. For two dozen larger cookies, drop dough by tablets spoonfuls three. Bake as directed below or until edges are light golden brown. Let cool one minute before removing from cookie sheet. Cool completely. Store in airtight container. Cookie size regular large bake time 8 10 minutes 9 11 minutes to prepare with vegetable oil. Make dough using 1 slash 3 cup oil, 2 tablespoons water and 1 egg. High altitude, 3500 to 6500 Stop. feet. Button. No chain. Stop. So there you go. I was able to get the more info option and it gave me the recipe. <laughs> And if I would go down further, it may have actually given me, you know, nutritional information as well. Uh, this also can do currency because here in the US, all our bills feel the same because that. I came to find out through years that that is not always the case for. Um, you know, other countries that sometimes they have different uh, markers on their currency or they have different size currency, but we do not. So. That has always been a difficult challenge for me. You know, yes, you can fold your money a certain way, but if you, if you don't know what it is, you can't fold it to make sure you're folding it right. Close. So, Button. directions you will need one second. Close. Gonna back Button. up here, and we're going to go into still and seeing AI. Button. We're going to go to currency. Um, and we'll get there. As channel, as as product, there. channel, yeah. adjust person, currency. Currency. So, all I do is hold this over. Uh, Hold the back camera of my phone over this bill. One US dollar. And that's how quick it is. I'm putting it down now. One US dollar. And that's that's the quickest how that how quick that response is to one US dollar. Um, I don't respond that quickly to one US dollar sometimes. Um, but the app does, which is really helpful. And um, that is some of the features it has. Like I said, there's a light detector, which is great because with my four children, uh, I don't always know if the lights are on or off. And the electric bill occasionally tells me that, but I'd rather know that before the bill comes in. So um, the light detector is really helpful for that. And also uh, the there's color identification, there's handwriting detection, which is kind of hit or miss. I, I've yet to see it decipher a doctor's script, but um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a feature of the program as well. One of the other things is picture detection. So it'll tell you when you take a picture, how many faces it sees in the picture. And you can actually train it to recognize people's faces, which is really cool. Not in the moment, you know, I don't see myself waving the camera around to see who's in the room. Uh, I'd rather just ask, you know, who's in the room or pick it up by voices, perhaps. But it's neat when you're looking at photos because you can drag your finger around a photo and it will tell you what it sees in the photo. And if the people are in your camera or into the app, uh, it will tell you, you know, uh, what faces are in the photo as well. So just some really neat features in a free app made by Microsoft to kind of help with the day to day independence of identification of things, reading printed material and, um, you know, identifying currency. Uh, I'm open for questions if there's any, and then I'll hand it over to Babic so he can continue with the physical spaces. Mike, I have a, uh, do have one quick question. If you could please um, give us a list of the items that you've talked about. We heard seeing AI, mm -hmm. Google Lens, Envision, mm -hmm. and what else did you record? Uh, Super Sense. Super, Super Sense, Sense AI. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome. So if there are I guess no more questions from Mike. I'll start in the physical accessibility area. Um, as we sort of shift gears into that, let me take a moment to add a little bit onto Mike's section. Um, 
accessibility in general, right? You've, those of you who are here in the first panel as well have heard adaptive, you may have heard assistive. The general idea with sort of all these terms is we are talking about things, approaches, sources of help that can make it a little easier for those who are blind, who are vision impaired, to live their everyday life without feeling like it's completely out of their control. So in that sense, one of the things that sort of comes up broadly is if you're hearing a lot of these apps and softwares and you're going, oh no, I don't know if I can handle this. Do not panic. You know, there are people to help. You know, Mike is mentioned in his bio. He is at the Virginia Rehab Center for the Blind and Vision Impaired. They are, I believe, right next door to the Department of the Blind and Vision Impaired, which has the State Talking Books Library. You may hear a little bit more about that in the next panel. There are a lot of people, a lot of instructors who are around and are willing to help slowly navigate this with you. So, you know, in my section, I'll be talking some of the physical things to be able to kind of just sort of move around in everyday life. Some of it is lovingly low tech, and some of it may feel very high tech. Um, wherever your comfort level is, that's probably where you should be starting. And like many of the other presenters, you know, I encourage, I hope that you do feel like by the time all these panels are done, you at least have a sense of where you might want to be starting, where you'd like to go sort of further and continue learning. This is an area where a lot of stuff is happening pretty regularly. A lot of the apps and techniques that Mike was discussing, the major software computer tech makers are now having international laws and guidelines, which are kind of prompting them to add new features pretty much every month, although there's a bit of a boom in winter for some reason. Um, so I just wanted to sort of add that in there, that if you're beginning to feel a little overwhelmed, you know, don't panic. We're all here to help. We're more than willing to share resources and help you kind of figure out where you'd like to sort of begin and go. In terms of physical accessibility, so for a lot of people, it may sound kind of silly, but there's a lot of question about how do I just move around. Um, this is especially true for those who are sort of newly vision impaired or newly blind, where they're used to having vision, being able to do things a certain way, and are now discovering that I may need to change a few things. Um, and some of it is you know, fairly simple from an indoor <laughs> perspective, right? being able to move the items most commonly used in your house to a place where you can easily grab them, trying to keep the floor clear of, sort of unexpected things that you might kick or trip over. Some of it is a bit of labeling. Uh, there is now a ton of things out there with sound, with vibration, that you can use to add on, to put, or to label, you know, in the past, you might have heard a lot about bump dots, which are relatively small, but as the name sort of implies, they stick up a little. They come in different shapes and sizes, and you can use that to put on things just to feel, oh, this is where the buttons on the microwave are. Um, there's also, as I kind of mentioned, for currency, for money, different ways of folding, different bills, different bill holders to sort of keep things organized. More and more, a lot of these are, again, including sound and vibration. So, you know, before it may have been, I'm going to hang one ribbon on my coat rack that has all my shirts at home. Now it's possible to get these types of ribbons or even the coat hangers themselves with a button that you can press that will say, you know, shirt, red, long sleeve, or so on. Um, this goes also a little bit into entertainment. You know, both Mike and our earlier presenter, Marilee, talked about trying to find recreation. How do we pass the time? Well, there are now a lot of games with sound and vibration and even Braille. Um, 
you know, Marilee had mentioned sort of the difficulty of playing ball games in school. It's now possible to get sports equipment that has bells and sound effects and buzzers built into it. So you can play soccer and hear the ball as it moves, for example. Audio descriptive has gone up pretty much everywhere. A lot of software films in particular, TV as well, now has these files available. They have them built into the streaming sites and the downloading sites as well. Mike demoed Star Wars. The one I actually like to mention tends to be Pokemon Detective, which came out a few years, but which does have audio description to describe all the fantastical little Pokemon beasts running around in the film. For those who are wondering, what are all these small children obsessing over? But sort of outside of those, in order to really sort of physically move around, you tend to hear some fairly common ones, right? Besides the sort of, again, keeping spaces clear. There's a lot of people who use what are called white canes. These are canes, they are colored white, they have a fairly strong grip at the top, and depending on how you're moving, they have different tips at the bottom. I believe the American Federation for the Blind has a program where they will send you a white cane for free, but there are definitely places and people you can work with to try to get one that's properly tailored to your height, making sure that the grip is good, and to help you sort of learn how to swing the cane in front of you. There's a very specific range that's generally suggested to sort of help orient you. Um, white canes are also now evolving though. So the next gen white canes, if you will, they are having things like map apps being built into them, uh, GPS systems being built into them. So it's now possible to have it sort of read aloud as you walk and you move. Um, some, I've yet to actually see them being really common, but there are ones that can now be connected to various other technical things. You know, I've heard of people who will connect it to, say, a Google Glass, which are glasses that have Google programming in them, and they will relay the information from there, which makes me go, wow, personally, but it's, you know, where things are kind of moving in that way. Another common one for mobility would be guide dogs. If you were here between the panels, you would have heard some of our panelists discussing, you know, the process of getting a guide dog, applying for one, being approved to have one, making the arrangements to come out, try out with the different types of guide dogs, see which one works best or may not work best, and that process. It's a length one, and I will happily allow those who have guide dogs to discuss that a bit further because I do not. Um, so this is a very common thing as well for those who would like that type of an accommodation. I mean, outside of that, again, a lot of sound, a lot of new tech. Um, one of the more places that I hear about from sort of the library side would be known as the Braille Bookstore, also known as the Braille Superstore. This is a company based out in, I believe it's California, um, but they have a lot of these types of things for everyday life available for sale, and they have pretty much all the things you can think of. Um, alarm clocks that talk and move, calendars that can read out, they have kitchen things that are labeled and brailled and weigh and talk so you can do the cooking using that recipe that Mike's device was reading out. So that's kind of a, a general over range of the physical moving through spaces and such. Uh, I'm happy to take more questions. I guess since after me there's a bit of a pause, you can ask questions to both Mike and I. It's really up to all of you. Abek, that was a lot of really awesome information. Do you have um, recommendations for places to go to purchase any of these items? Uh, yes, and I can throw one of the again, more common ones that I hear uh, into the chat if people would like. Yes, please, and then I'll read it out loud. Okay. I am slowly typing, though of course no one can see me do this. So 
Virginia Beach. Is. Sorry, Virginia Beach um, Public Library recommends Maxi Aids, M A X I A I D S, and Babak recommends BrailleBookstore.com. Both of those are great. Uh, also, I would recommend, um, depending on what you're looking for, APH.org has some American Printing House, and I believe there's Independent Living Aids as well. I'm slowly trying to type it, but the National Federation of the Blind, um, NFB.org, under their program services, they list both their free white cane program and they also list their independence market. Uh, the market is located at their headquarters in Baltimore and you can physically visit to check out a lot of these similar products and they send things out from there as well. Thanks, and Dinah, um, Dinah Abramson added independent living aids um, website is www.independentliving.com. I'll also add as people are looking at the chat, you know, without stealing too much of the thunder of those in the panel following us, they are talking book libraries may also have versions of some of these things available to them as well. You'd have to check in with each one in your service area to find out what they carry on site or who they can connect you with. Okay, we don't have any questions in the chat. So, Caitlin, do you want to unmute everybody so that we can have some uh, questions asked by phone if yes. anybody wants to? There's a chat message from Dinah saying, in Texas, some state agencies will help for pay, pay for items, office for older blind individuals and independent living centers. I don't know about services in Virginia. Again, some service, um, some products are available with some assistance. Um, does anybody wanna speak to that, Babak or Mike? Uh, yeah, there is um, for the, through the Department for the Blind and Vision Impaired, there is a uh, rehabilitation teaching uh, independent independent living uh, part of of the Department for the Blind and Vision Impaired. So sometimes that they will help with with assisting with costs like that as well. And, and back to Bob, like who mentioned, you know how close. Uh, the rehab center is yes we're kind of all share the same kind of property if you will with uh, the headquarters for the uh, library and resource center and then the dbvi office and the rehab center so all in the uh, at uh, on azalea avenue in richmond so if you need the number two uh, um dbvi that's uh 804-371-3140 Interesting services. Message from Sarah G. Okay. Virginia offers sort of differing services. Um, the Department for the Blind and Vision Impaired, as well as the Rehab Center for the Blind and Vision Impaired, probably would have the most insight into what's available. Um, I also know that some of the separate but related agencies in Virginia. Um, like the Department of, I think it's Aging and Rehabilitative Services, uh, they also have instructors, trainers, and people who can assist in finding some of these items. And if you're not quite at the, that point yet, and you're just at the point of seeking general information, um, again, I'll leave this to the panel following us, but a lot of times the talking book libraries in your areas may be able to help put you in touch with a local group local chapter of the National Federation of the Blind, people in our Fredericksburg area, you know, Holly's Volunteers for the Blind, and a lot of times they will have additional information, can help you sort of begin finding the local community and finding the information and tools you may need. Caitlin, am I unmuted? This is Mary. Yes, you are. Okay. 
can I say something? Um, it's not really a question. Uh, I forgot to mention this actually in, in my little talk. Um, the American Council of the Blind has been running um, community um, I, I, chats, programs, and um, they are free. And I know there are a vast variety of, of topics. Um, I know that um, Freedom Scientific comes on and does some programs. Uh, they're teaching NVDA. Um, there's Mac courses. There's knitting and crochet courses. Uh, one lady is teaching beginning guitar. Um, there's just general chat um, times too. Um, and um, that goes, it starts at 11 o'clock in the morning and goes to about 11 o'clock at night. Um, it's also on ACB radio, some of them are. Yeah, and um, you can sign up. Um, and you can also sign up to get their daily schedule to know when to um, go in. And it's, they do it on Zoom calls. So, um, you know, you're able to ask questions. And you can really, I've, I've learned a lot from those calls and um, that's a good resource also. The additional websites that were just shared were acb.org and the Hadley Institute is also a great resource. It's www.hadley.edu. And in the next panel, we've got a bunch of um, other resources um, that we can provide in the chat. Um, I'll just put those in there when we get to it. So there's more to come. Some of the same, some more. <laughs>